welcome to this first session. Hope you're excited. Can you please close the door? Um, thank you. So today, um, Arturo and I uh, will take you on a um, tour from the Middle Age into the present through alchemy. So in the Middle Age, alchemists were very busy people um, trying to convert uh, metals into gold. And today we're going to share with you a modern tale so that you can um, learn how to turn your data sets into gold. And before we embark on that tale, um, to introduce ourselves, uh, we are these modern alchemists. Um, so Arturo and I represent Datasite. We're a nonprofit organization created by and for the research community. And um, we um, have a common uh, mission, and that is to ensure that research data outputs and resources are all uh, openly available and accessible to all to advance research. And we do so by providing digital infrastructure for research. Uh, so we provide DOIs for research outputs and resources, and also tools like APIs that can help integrate uh, DOIs into your workflows, and also analytics and dashboards that can help you track the impact of your research. And uh, in this modern tale um, of alchemy, what is the philosopher's stone or the element that can transform metals into gold or data into gold? Persistent identifiers. Um, so a persistent identifier is a unique alphanumeric string that refers and redirects uh, to a digital resource. And uh, the most common persistent identifiers are DOIs, for research outputs and resources, ORCID identifiers for researchers, and ROAR identifiers for research organization. And because persistent identifiers help identify and connect entities across a research ecosystem, they can be considered the building blocks of research infrastructure. And uh, continuing with the alchemy thread, what is the prime matter or the starting point for the alchemical transformation? And that is metadata. So every uh, DOI identifier is associated with a metadata uh, record. In this case, it's metadata about the creator of the data set. And you can see the name, last name, uh, ORCID ID, and affiliation with a ROAR identifier. And uh, metadata is uh, essential. It's very important because it's information that describes a resource. And um, the data site metadata is openly available through all through a CC0 license. And metadata is uh, crucial because it helps provide a context on how that piece of research, like the data collection or production, has been uh, made. And um, transmutation is the process of transforming metals into gold and can be compared to the process of using persistent identifiers and metadata to transform your raw data sets into valuable, accessible, and also reusable um, piece of scholarship. In this example, we can see a data set, data set about a potato. And um, thanks to the metadata, we can see the creators, we can see the description of that data set, subject, keywords, licenses. And because it's identified uh, through all uh, the research landscape, we can also track some metrics, in this case, downloads. And this is another part of the transmutation process. Um, so this is a data set uh, from uh, agroforestry uh, research. And you can see the DOI, and it was originally published in 2009. And because it has a DOI and it has metadata, it can be discovered and reused. And um, 10 years later, in 2019, uh, this data set has been cited or referenced uh, in a journal article from an ecology journal. So you can see the power of using uh, DOIs and metadata to make your research uh, data um, accessible and reusable. And Datasite only provides the infrastructure 
um, so the means uh, for your research to become identified, accessible, and discoverable. But it's really our community of members who do the work of sharing their information, of registering DOIs and metadata. Um, so research organizations join data site as institutional members to register DOIs and metadata. And again, um, all the metadata uh, is by default publicly available through SEC Zero license. And uh, this is uh, the goal. This is um, uh, statistics from our metadata registry. So currently we have more than 55 million DOIs that help identify data sets, but also other kind of um, research outputs like uh, physical objects, preprints, software, um, reports, uh, workflows, uh, computational notebooks, and uh, more. Well, everything sounds great, um, but uh, it's not about uh, magic, but uh, everything is about metadata. Uh, keeping research connected um, is essential uh, to achieve our goals as researchers, as authors, or any research outlet that we provide. Name it a uh, data set, of course, uh, code, uh, journal article, or any research output that we are uh, authoring is essential to be discovered and visible for everyone. So connection metadata is metadata that represents relationships uh, or connections between different entities. Uh, for example, we can have a paper citing a data set, a person authoring a paper, a person that is affiliated, of course, uh, with an institution, and, of course, an, an institution that is funding a research output, and, of course, a data set, uh, is, when a data set is compiled or created by a software. So we can have all these relationships thanks to the metadata that are uh, gluing or are, are attaching all these elements or all these entities together. Um, also, the metadata can help us to facilitate the interoperability between the persistent identifiers and the persistent identifier systems and the open research infrastructure in general, of course. And with this uh, persistent open infrastructure, including the interoperable links, the metadata can be cited and reused and reproduced, of course. Bits and metadata can help us to make research outputs fair. The researchers or uh, creators and their organizations and their, uh, and their outputs are all interconnected in real life, as we can see. Bits and metadata can help us to make these connections visible and transparent. The data site metadata registry is available to, uh, to everyone who is interested through data site commons, which is here, is open, so you can, we invite you to explore it. And the, this uh, platform is powered by the PIDGRAPH, an inter interconnected network that, of nodes that represent research entities and uh, that are tied together through the PIDs and the metadata. And of course, we can track the impact of our research. Here is an example of a data set that has uh, at least five citations. The description, this, this is an example of commons. Uh, the citations, and of course we can see and we can track also the, the other research outputs that are citing our, re our original output. So here is a journal article that is citing the previously uh, shared data set, and it, this is crucial as creators of outputs to have uh, visible recognition and acknowledgement of what we are doing and what we are working with. And also a lot of statistics to see um, with what other elements we are being uh, cited and what uh, other research outputs are being created thanks to our original contribution. As mentioned before, uh, we want to support recognition. I think it is important as creators or alchemists of this uh, uh, tale um, to identify wh what is the impact of our research, what is the impact of our work, so we can track everything thanks to these uh, open tools. And I think that uh, all of us can be really interested to know uh, what has been uh, going on after the, the publishing of our original works. But not only for uh, researchers, but also for organizations. Thanks to the metadata that is all interconnected and described, uh, describing all the elements of our research output, we can also track uh, by organization how um, all the researchers or all the creators are um, creating and are sharing openly their works. And we can track through time, through different types of work, and of course the different uh, licenses that are being added to each work. 
Also, it is important to mention that in this year, we released the public data file that contains metadata of all the 55 uh, million DOIs that are available through an open uh, CC0 CC license. We are developing also a harvesting service for metadata aggregators, so we can have uh, more visibility of uh, all the works that have a DOI um, in, in their metadata. And of course, that can be um, indexed to all these uh, metadata aggregators to have more visibility and more recognition of our work. One of our initiatives is the Data Citation Corpus, um, a trusted uh, central aggregate of all data citations of, of further, for, for further understanding of data usage and advanced uh, meaningful data metrics. Uh, we also want to track all the, the different citations that we have, and these kind of tools and these elements ha can help the community to understand better what is the impact of the citation of, or the, uh, of the data sets and all the elements that we are uh, providing. And finally, we want to invite you to join us. Uh, we, as Gabby mentioned, we are a global community uh, driven by the members. So we want to invite you if you're interested or your, or your organization can be interested uh, to become a member. There are different options to, to support data site. And there's also the ambassador program for anyone who is interested to spread the word about data site and the adoption of uh, persistent identifiers and DOIs. And we want to uh, well, share with you and invite you if you're interested to follow us and to join us in this, uh, in this task. So thank you so much, everyone. And we are, I think we have time for a couple of questions. Can you explain, um, so from what I understand, your platform helps we register data sets. Is that like a, an open protocol that you implement and you like facilitate that? Or like how, if I have a data set I, and I want to identify it, how would I go about doing that? Thank you. Yes, so data side works directly with organizations and uh, you have different ways to register the DOIs. Um, we have APIs, so we have a public API and the member API. The public API is for anyone that wants to query uh, our metadata, so that's uh, openly available to all. The member API is the one that allows you to register DOIs and metadata with us, and for that you need to be a member. Um, we also have members that don't have the um, capacity, the resources to uh, develop an API integration, so we also have a manual user interface uh, that's called Fabrica, and with that members can uh, fill in a form with the metadata fields and register DOIs. And there are also many systems third-party systems that have uh, our API integrated, like OJS um, for uh, journals, Dataverse uh, for repositories, uh, DSpace, CCAN, uh, and, and more. So there's three ways to register DOIs. Are you using uh, alternative metrics, like he mentioned in uh, social media, to calculate the, the impact? Well, uh, the benefit of using uh, open metadata is that all the aggregators that are interested to, um, to harvest and to, uh, uh, well, to harvest all, all this metadata, uh, they, they can uh, have it. Um, the, it is also important to mention that the persistent identifiers are uh, well, all, all interconnected. And when we talk about uh, persistent identifiers for objects like DOI, we also have to mention persistent identifiers for organizations, for example, the research, uh, the, the ROR, the research organization for uh, no. A registry of, res of research organizations that uh, compiles and extracts information from every organization that is openly registered there. And also we have, uh, of course, um, persistent identifiers for people, uh, which can be, for example, for example, the ORCID ID, that can, all these are connected and can uh, extract and can uh, compile all the information and then uh, track it. So we can have the, like, the history of what we are doing, where are we affiliated, um, what kind of words are we doing? And all these, uh, well, th this is open, so uh, any aggregator can 
uh, start harvesting, and with our new uh, system of har harvesting aggregator, um, many more uh, metadata aggregators can uh, have more information about this. So we don't provide all metrics, um, but if you install a widget into your repository, you can track uh, views and downloads, and of course, citations. Um, we yeah, are um, neutral in the research landscape. We don't want to promote a metric. That being said, DataSide was established to make data a first-class uh, citizen in the research landscape. But if other organizations want to harvest our metadata and um, design their own metrics, that's possible, but we don't do all metrics. I have a question regarding the licenses. So you track the licenses that the objects have, right? Uh, what can you say about the trends that you have observed? Because it's a, it's a complicated issue, right? And people are very willing to share their uh, products openly, but sometimes they, you know, they choose the wrong license and so on. So what is your viewpoint on this? Thanks, Yvonne, and yes, as you said, uh, it's complicated. Um, so we do not curate the metadata, so we offer the means for others to register the metadata. And um, metadata is also a collective effort, so it takes a community, uh, an engaged community, to do that. And uh, if we see on the, on the slide, can we see the slide? Uh, yeah, in this example from this organization, um, you can see um, half of the metadata for, for, for WAP, uh, which is the organization we are on, is missing. Um, so we have mandatory fields in the metadata, um, and license is not a part of that, so um, that's why we also keep talking about metadata for organizations to register this information. Um, but yeah, uh, in many cases it's missing, or there's also a wide range of how that metadata uh, is struck. Um, we work with the community, so if the community um, makes a consensus on a standard on how to use licenses, we're happy to adopt. Uh, we have a metadata working group that's um, uh, community governed and that um, governs the, meta, the data side metadata schema. Uh, thank you. It's, it seems like y'all have gotten a lot of adoption, like wa decently widespread adoption of these uh, identifiers. How? How did you do that? <laughs> Thank you. So DataSide was established in 2009, so uh, that's more than 10 years ago. We do have members in all continents. We also have consortia, which are groups of organizations. Um, we actually have consortia in each continent except Antarctica. That being said, most of our members uh, are based in Europe and in North America. So that's why we're doing uh, a lot of outreach in, in other regions um, for DOIs to be adopted globally. Um, I think we didn't mention it here, but it's important to say that DOIs, persistent identifiers, open metadata are a very important part of the open science agenda. In fact, the UNESCO uh, recommendation on open science released um, last year recommends persistent identifiers, open infrastructure. So that's also what helps the community adopt um, our infrastructure. Thank you for all the questions.